Hello and welcome to Kotlin Tips. My name is Sebastian and today we are improving loops. Let's say we have a loop that goes over a collection of fruits. In our case, these are just strings. And what it does is it goes over and it prints every index and every fruit. Now it does so by doing a for loop uh, from zero to fruits.size minus one. Now IntelliJ already shows you that it has a better idea of how to do this, but we're gonna do it step by step because you can learn something new in every step. So first of all, we have this weird minus one back here. That's because the dot dot operator to create the range from one to fruits.size minus one is inclusive. But since we are using zero based indexing, we would get an out of bounds error if we were to go to fruits.size just like this. However, Kotlin also has a different operator for ranges called until. You can type this one in here. And then you can even see that the inlay hint shows us that this one is exclusive. So it's including the zero, but it's excluding fruits.size. That is the first step. Instead of doing your offsets manually, use until if you have a non-inclusive range. For me, this is still a bit hard to understand when I see this code uh, because I don't immediately equate fruits.size and the last index of this collection. So another way to write the exact same thing would be to go back to the inclusive operator and instead go to uh, last index in our loop. And now everything is already kind of taking shape because now this already says for each index from the zeroth index to the last index. I can read this much easier now. But there is another step that allows us to make this even simpler and not build our own ranges at all. And that is that instead of creating this range right here, we can just say fruits.indices, which does the exact same thing. But at this point, uh, we just rely on the fact that the indices function returns us the indices from zero to the last one. Now, as we can see in the body of the loop, we are actually accessing the elements of the collection at the given index here. So it's really a little bit silly to only iterate over the indices. Once again, there is a better way because what we really want to do is we want to iterate over the fruits with the index. And at that point, we get a pair of two values, which is the index and the fruit, which means we can just completely remove this line. And again, our code shrinks a little and it's a little bit more elegant. And I would argue it's also a little bit more expressive because at this point we are just saying we are looking at all the fruits and their indices and we're iterating over them. So at least in my mind, this is closer to a for each loop than it is to a for loop over indices. Now, if we're doing multiple collection operations one after the other, and we want to add this for loop at the end to this chain, we can use a function called for each indexed. That function uh, takes, as you can see, the index as well as, in our case, the fruit as its input parameters for the lambda. And then we can write the same code that we've written above uh, using this lambda syntax as well. Does the same thing, is maybe even a little bit more short. I hope you found these tips useful. Maybe they'll pop into your mind the next time you are looking at some Kotlin code that contains a loop and indices or ranges or until or minus ones. And maybe it will be helpful. See you in the next one. Take care.